<laughs> yum, yum! Hey everybody and welcome back to Moto with Ellery. In this episode we're actually going to be in Photoshop and we're going to look at doing some post-production. So uh, both some things that you can do to your images to help kind of spice them up or uh, or clean them up or other things like that uh, inside of Photoshop and also some ways that you can help automate this process in order to make uh, it quicker and easier so that um, you can either do it with a large group of images or that if you have uh, some kind of common techniques that you use very frequently uh, you can accomplish those things without having to go through all of the steps every time. All right, so uh, here we've got a rendering of some replicators. Um, this is just some grass and clovers over a hillside with an HDRI environment. So really simple render, uh, but we're going to look at how we can um, improve this image uh, and do a few things to uh, look at some color correction and also some uh, sharpening and some blurs. Uh, but at the same time, we're going to look at automating this all at you know as we go. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, click here to open up my history and then I'm going to go over to my actions. Um, so this is also the little um, arrow here, the little play button arrow, and this is going to give us some actions. Um, I've got a folder here, my actions, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create um, some some changes to this image uh, that will allow me to um, have a little creative control over it, uh, but at the same time I'm going to be writing these out so that I could reapply these at any time to any other image. Now uh, obviously sometimes uh, these will work from image to image. Uh, the more changes you make, uh, the more you might need to go in and customize these kind of changes. Uh, but at the same time, you can write these into uh, into an action here. And then if it doesn't work, all you simply have to do is just revert your image and you can try a different one. That way you can try through some different looks very quickly. So now that I have my actions folder selected here, I'm just going to um, press this button, the little page here to create a new action. Uh, and I'm going to call this um, thumbnail. Because uh, a lot of times I will create uh, thumbnails. I usually use 1280 by 720 and I apply a few different filters um, and I'm going to get that all in here into the same uh, into the same action. Um, and you can if you want. If this is something that you do very frequently, you can apply this to a, to a function key. So you can turn on a function key and then you can include um, either shift or control or both. Um, in order to be able to uh, just get this done with a hot key press, which uh, can be very useful. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start by recording this. All right, and once I'm recording, now I'm going to go in and start actually doing the things I'm going to do. And the first thing that I want to do is resize the image. So uh, let's go ahead up to image and image size. And you can see I rendered this just in preview. Um, and I just used uh, something that I know would be a little bit larger. That way I'm scaling it down uh, just to get a little bit sharper image. So I'm going to set this to 1280. And um, I was already at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so it's going to go to 1280 by 720, and I'm going to click OK. Now, as a side note, if you want to um, change this to a, a 16 by 9 aspect ratio when it's not, um, I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. Another thing that you could do is also go to um, Image and Canvas Size, and then I could go and crop the image down. So if you have something that's square and you want to uh, change it to... Uh, a 16 by 9, you could do that just by going in and changing the canvas size after the fact to 1280 by 720 or whatever resolution you want. And then we'll crop it down and it will also um, trim your canvas. All right, so now that I've got my image uh, size correctly, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, creating some duplicates here. So I'm going to start just with a single duplicate. And on this first one, I'm going to create a little bit of a chromatic aberration. All right, so um, in order to do that, I need to affect just a single channel. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to distort a single channel. In this case, I'm going to use the red channel. Um, that won't have any impact on... Uh, the the clarity of the image itself, but what it will do is it will cause uh, me to get a little bit of some fringing on the image around the edges, so like some chromatic aberration. Now there are other ways to do this. I'm showing you a manual way here that I like to do because I, I feel it gives you a lot of control here. So uh, let's go ahead and go over to channels, and I want to make sure that I select just the red channel. But if I want to see this um, as I work, I can also turn the visibility back on for RGB but you can see that my red channel is all that's highlighted. So I'm going to be affecting the red channel while looking at everything. So let's go up to Filter and Distort, and I'm going to use the Spherize filter for this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, kind of push the image outwards. And I'm going to start by doing uh, a little bit higher 
um, higher density version of this here so that you can see. So I'm going to set my amount to 4%, um, which is extremely high for this kind of an effect. Uh, but I just want you to see the effect first, and then we'll go back and do it at a lower level. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now you can see here, especially up in these corners, you can see that we're getting that fringing effect. You can see the cyan there in the red there. Now, obviously, that's super heavy. So let's go ahead and undo that. And I'm going to try it again here. Distort. Spherize, usually somewhere around 1% or 2% will do it. Um, this is a fairly busy image already, so I don't want to go overboard with it. So I'm just going to go up to 1% and go ahead and click OK. All right, and now you can see we've got the effect on there. It's very subtle, but we see a little bit of CN here and a little bit of red here. That's okay. I probably could have gone up to 2%, but um, you know, I'm going to keep it a little bit lower. Also keep in mind, if you're doing a higher resolution image, sometimes you want to set that up a little bit more as well. All right, so there's my chromatic aberration. And now the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to sharpen up the details. Um, I could use um, Unsharp Mask or Smart Sharpen or something like that, uh, but I'm going to actually use um, an individual layer in independent layer in order to be able to do my sharpening. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And what I'm going to use here under the other uh, the other menu is the high pass filter. And what the high pass filter is going to do is it's going to find areas of contrast and it's going to highlight the areas of contrast, um, darkening and lightening the edges around the contrast. And then everything else is going to be left as a, uh, a neutral gray color. So if I turn this down pretty low, so if I go down to something like 0.4 pixels, you can see that it's a fairly subtle effect. Uh, if I go up too high, you actually start to see this gets really heavy uh, and we get more colors introduced and it's not really going to work for our purposes here. So I'm going to try and use something usually between 0.5 pixels and a pixel. So let's go down to maybe, I want to see these blades of grass fairly clearly, so let's go to maybe 0.7 and I think that looks good, so that's okay. Now if you want that to be variable here as a side note, um, as you work, you can always click on uh, this this button here, this square uh, that I have right now next to the high pass filter. And that will make that so that when you run this action over again, it will actually bring up your pop up menu for that. And you can choose uh, the amount of high pass um, as you uh, as you continue to work. But then as soon as you select the amount that you want and hit OK, it will continue with the action. So you always have the option to uh, to access options as you move. All right, so continuing on here. And now I need to set this to an adjustment mode that, um, a blending mode that will actually um, use this information uh, properly. So I've, uh, if I want all of my gray color to disappear and my highlights and my lowlights to, uh, to blend over the top, I'm going to use an overlay uh, mode. So let's go down here, change normal to overlay. And now you can see that I've got a little bit more sharpness on all of my details in my grass here. So if I turn this off, you can see it's softer. If I turn it on, it gets a little bit stronger. You can always go back and adjust the opacity, but that's that's a nice start. All right, so next we're going to go in and add a little bit of bloom to just blend some things together. So I'm actually going to do two levels of bloom. One on the very bright uh, highlights. In this case, that's just going to be the bit of sky poking through here. And then another one that's a little bit softer and a little bit uh, less pronounced, but that will uh, kind of blend a lot of things together, kind of give a little bit of a wash to it. All right, so let's start by just hitting Command J to create a new layer. I'm going to drag this one up to the top. And let's go ahead to our levels. And what I'm going to do, let's pull these levels here where they're visible on screen is I'm going to pull this uh, black level up, up, up until all I have showing are my brightest highlights. In this case, that's going to be that little bit of sky. And I may want to pull my white point down a little bit as well, just to give it a little bit more kick. I think something like that works. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and click OK on that. And now I need to blur this and adjust the blend mode. So let's go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And right now my blur level set very high. I don't want it that high. Um, I'm going to go somewhere around four or five pixels. Now, if you're not changing the scale of your image first, you know, in this case, I scaled it to uh, 1280 by 720. But if I want to be able to use this on larger images, then you may want to go in and actually um, 
leave your Gaussian blur with the options. Um, you know, check the little box so that you can go back and adjust the amount of blur. In this case, I think this is fine. Um, and I'm just going to set this to a good amount for this resolution. Um, let's go ahead and click OK. And then again, I'm going to go to the blend mode. And this time, I'm going to set it to screen so that my highlights will pop out over the top. You can see if I turn that off and back on, we get a little bit more light kind of filtering through those trees. All right, so again, we're going to do that a second time. And we're going to take this one and put it up under here. I'm going to hide the, the first one that we did so we can just see the impact of this one. Um, and again, we're going to go to levels. And this time, I'm going to pull my, uh, my black point up a bit, but not quite so much. So I want to get a little bit more light with this area through the trees and whatnot. I'm still going to pull my white level down as well. Um, but what you'll notice is as I do this, um, we're getting a lot more uh, color saturation. So I'll have to go back here and adjust my color saturation in a moment as well. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and add in our blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And this one I'm going to make softer. So I'm going to pull the value up, usually around double what I did on the other one. Let's go ahead and click OK. And if my colors still look a little saturated, which in this case they do, and usually they will with this kind of an adjustment, um, I need to go ahead and adjust that. So let's go to Image, Adjust. And I'm just going to use Hue and Saturation and pull the saturation down maybe 40 or 50%. We'll click OK. And again, to our blending mode, we'll set it to Screen. And now when I turn both of these on, I can go and look and adjust the opacity because right now it's a little too heavy. So let's go ahead and adjust this one down to maybe 40%. And this one here, I'll leave a little higher because it's just on those highlights. Um, it'll go for 80%. All right, so um, just as a quick note here, I want to be able to look and see my before and after as I work a lot of times. So I'll just hold the Alt key and click on the eyeball for my background, and that will show me my original image. And if I click it again, it'll bring everything back so I can see where I am thus far. Okay, so up to this point, I've added in some chromatic aberration, a little bit of sharpening, and a little bit of bloom. Um, the next thing that I'm going to add in is going to be some color correction and a little bit of a vignette effect. So let's start with the color correction. And I'm going to use an adjustment layer for this. So let's click down here at the bottom. And I'm going to adjust my curves. So now I get an adjustment layer with the curves here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, by adjusting the red and the blues uh, to give this a little bit more warmth in the in the highlights and a little bit more cool in the shadows. So in order to do that, I can take my reds and I'm just going to pull my white value over for the reds and my black value back. Okay. Now I'm going to do the opposite for the blues. So with the blues, I'm going to pull my white value down just a little bit and my blue value up just a little bit. So you can see that's added uh, a significant amount of coolness here while we're still retaining the warmth up here. Now one thing that often happens when you do this is you end up kind of um, overdoing your green. So now I'm going to go back to the green in the middle here and I'm just going to click in the middle of the green and dial it back just a little bit. You know, this is not meant to be a real heavy color correction. This is just a real light one that's going to give you a little bit more, um, a little bit more contrast and a little bit more uh, kind of variation in your hues. So I think that's probably okay. So again, we can click this off to see the before and the after. So before it's very kind of green and washed out. Uh, after we get a lot more. Um, a lot more uh, mixture of cool tones and warm tones throughout the image. Um, I think that works for this one. Again, you don't have to use all of these things uh, on any specific image. I'm just giving you a bunch of tools, and you can pick and choose as you want in order to get your own finished looks. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to add is a little bit of a, uh, a vignette. And I'm actually going to do a two-step vignette. So this vignette is going to uh, kind of pop up the middle section. And it's at the same time going to go and darken the outer section. So it's going to be two separate layers uh, to handle the vignette. So I'm going to start here um, by creating a selection because this is going to save me a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and just select out this area here through the middle. And something about like that ought to do it. Um, all right, so now I've got the middle here selected. Let's press Q to bring up my quick mask. Um, and that button is also down here if you want to change that with a button. And I'm going to blur this. So filter, blur, let's just use a good old Gaussian blur. And I'm going to make this a fairly heavy blur, something like that. So we've got uh, some bleed there. And let's press Q again. So now you can see I have just the center section um, selected here. 
All right, so now with that center selection already made, I can go ahead and adjust my, um, my exposure, and since I already have a selection made, it will create a mask automatically. So let's go ahead and click here on my adjustment layers, and I'm gonna choose exposure. You can see I've already got um, a mask. Now this mask is, um, is showing the stuff in the middle and it's uh, masking out the corners so the corners won't be affected. Uh, so this is the area that I want to bring up in color just a little bit. So let's go ahead and increase my exposure and also my, my gamma just a little bit. You don't want to go too much or else this will look washed out. But I just want to give it a little bit more brightness there. I think something like that works. All right, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, but uh, on the reversed uh, mask. So I can just control click on this mask to create um, a selection based off that mask. And then I'm going to invert that. So control shift I or command shift I, if you're on a Mac, um, will invert your selection. So now I have just the corner selected. I'm going to add another exposure and do the reverse. So let's go up here to exposure. And this time I'm going to pull the exposure down. And I'm going to be a little bit heavier on this part because this is just the corners. And this is just giving us that, uh, that vignette area there. And something like that I think is good. All right, I think that that's going to work out pretty good. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to do here on this kind of basic setup um, that I'm going to include in the macro or the, the action is I'm going to add in just a little bit of grain. So I'm going to put the grain um, underneath all my color correction layers here. I'm just going to create a blank layer, and I'm going to fill it with gray, add some noise, and then set the blending mode. So Shift Backspace will bring up your fill uh, dialog box. Um, you could also fill with foreground and background colors, but um, if you want to be able to have control, you can use shift uh, and backspace. And I'm going to choose 50% gray, and we'll click OK. And now we get just this uh, basic gray layer. It has a little bit of color correction on it. You still see the vignette on it, and that's fine. Um, but let's go ahead and add some noise now to this. So filter, noise, and add noise. And here you can set the amount. This is also one that a lot of times I will set to a variable. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do anything with a variable, so it will just run all on its own. Uh, so let's go to something like that. And that'll work. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to set my blend mode. Again, since we started with gray, I'm going to use an overlay blend mode. And then I'm going to drop back the opacity just a little bit, maybe 80%. Okay, so a quick look here. Let's hold Alt or Option on the Mac and click on the background eyeball so we can see there's where we came from, there's where we are currently, and also we were at a slightly different scale. So we've scaled to 720p and uh, and we've applied all these filters to get our uh, finished look like this. Um, all right, so with that, let's go ahead and click on our actions, and you can see it's still recording here. Uh, so one thing left that I want to do is I want to save the image. So let's go File, Save As, and I'm just going to call this replicator test. Uh, I'm going to save this as a PNG file because I use PNGs for a lot of things when I upload. Uh, let's call this replicator and we'll call this edited. And we'll save that. Okay, and now I've saved that and uh, we can set up our settings here. I'm going to use no compression and no interlacing. And there we go. Now I can go ahead and click stop and our action with all of these different layers. Um, has been saved. Now, granted, there were a few things that I showed and hid a layer a few times and uh, some things like that to demonstrate, so those wouldn't all have to be in there, but they're actually all included, um, which shows just the power of the system. So um, now I've got something that I can very easily uh, go ahead and apply to uh, an image without having to do any of the work. So just so we can see that here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to revert this image. You can see now we're back to uh, our full resolution and nothing happening. And now what I'm going to do is just select the thumbnail here, the thumbnail action, and go ahead and hit play. And it'll run through all of the actions, and in just a few seconds, you'll have your uh, your finished piece here. So this has all the effects applied to it, and it's actually still as a Photoshop file, so you could save this uh, from here as a Photoshop file if you want to go back in and do any uh, additional editing. Uh, but I wanted to show one last thing here, and that's that you can also take this, and if this is the kind of thing that you do very frequently, you could save this as a droplet, which will be its own standalone file on your desktop that then you can just drag and drop images onto, and it will automatically 
you know, put them wherever um, wherever you want. It will save out the files. So let's go up to the file menu, and I'm going to go to automate, and we're going to choose create droplet. Now you already have to have uh, your action created in order for this to work. Um, so you have to create the action first. You can't create the action in here, um, but I'm going to choose a, a location here to save this. So I'm going to put this on the um, the the uh, the desktop here, and let's just call this thumbnail. And I'm going to put it in my droplets. I've created a folder on my desktop called droplets. Uh, so we'll just save that there. And I need to figure out um, where I want to save these. So I'm going to set my destination to a folder. And then I'm going to choose a folder. And I've already got a folder on my desktop that's uh, selected. It's called sized files. And I want to override the save as action so that it's going to always put them there in that place. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so now if I hide Photoshop, uh, we can see that I've got here a droplets folder. It has our droplet in it. And I have my sized files folder here, which I'm just going to open up so that we've got it here visible. So if I take this image here, this is our initial image that we had. And if I just drag and drop this on the thumbnail, see it's going to open it in Photoshop, run through all of the stuff, and then close it. Now in this case, I already had the image open, so it's probably going to come out a little bit weird. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm actually going to run that again here. So let's go ahead and drag and drop that in there. Because the image was already open, so it ran all of the, <laughs> the, the filters again. So let's go ahead and check that out. So here is our replicator test PNG file. I can open that up. Uh, I can compare that to the original. See, there's the original. There's the edited version with everything um, happening. So that's a good way that you can uh, very quickly go in and get a lot of extra processing done. Um, you can define a few styles that you use frequently, uh, keep a, a folder of them on your desktop, and then anytime you have renders that, um, especially if you're working on a project, you want everything to have a uniform look, then you can take and just apply this to them. They'll be all ready. They'll be in your folder wherever you des designed, um, and you can send them right out to uh, to be finished. So, if you like this video and videos like it, you can follow me on Patreon. That's Patreon.com/slash Ellery, where subscribers can get uh, downloadable Photoshop files um, and Moto files, or whatever the case may be. In this case, I'm going to include uh, the rendered image as well as the Photoshop file of the replicator scene. So, if you want to uh, try some different uh, renders and then uh, pipe them through and try them with Photoshop, you can do that. Um, I'll also include the droplet, so this will have all of the, the source content for this. Uh, you get those for Patreon subscribers. You can also get uh, the content for this episode or any other episode um, a la carte uh, via Gumroad, and that's gumroad.com slash Ellery. Also, don't forget to go and check out uh, Pixel Fondue for all sorts of great uh, Moto and other graphics tutorials. That does it for this one. Now go make something cool, and I'll see you in the next episode. Yum, yum!